Hey guys, this is Ernesto. Welcome back to yet another video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I'm having a wonderful day. So I wanted to bring you um, this video really quick. Hopefully I can knock this out in 10 minutes or less. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys some context about this image and how it was captured and how I did the retouching. I'm not gonna actually do any retouching in this video, but I'm gonna just walk you guys through the steps that I took to get the image to this final point that you're looking at right now. Okay, so let's start with where it was captured and why. So I captured this in a parking lot. What drew me to this particular area in the parking lot was this light. Without this light, I wouldn't have taken this image. And that's the only reason I took this image. So that's how we started. So this is the straight out of camera image that I was that I took. Again, like I said, the only reason I took this is because of this pool of light. Without that pool of light, I wouldn't have taken this image. Next is uh, frequency separation. Really and truly, this could have been done on any regular layer because normally what I would normally do in frequency separation is mess with the lower layer to try to blend uh, lights and shadows, blend in those two things together, okay? Uh, that's what I would typically use this for. But as you can see, I didn't really use this layer at all. What I used was basically the upper layer, which is the texture right doing some changing up the skin so if i zoom in here because i know youtube is not that great with the resolution so if i zoom in here and i do a quick before and after so that's basically what i did to clean up the blemishes next is basically dodging and burning so dodging and burning is a very powerful thing and instead of using the frequency separation to do that transition between lights and shadows what I used instead was dodging and burning to basically help do that. Now, dodging and burning is something that you have to get used to doing. I am still getting used to doing it. That's why I'm practicing it. Um, you guys should practice it as well. So this one was just basically doing some good um, transitions between lights and shadows. Um, this is not the global dodging and burning. This is just localized dodging and burning to get um, to transition between the, the lights and shadows, okay? One of the things I will tell you guys to help you with your dodging and burning is using like a black and white layer above your dodging and white, um, your, using a black and white layer above your dodging and burning to help you see those transitions better, right? So if I turn off what I did, as you can see here, that you could see up here that if I zoom in, Right, you could see there's some um, dark spots there, dark spots there, and you could easily see it without the color. Right, if you turn off the color, it's a little bit hard to. I'm sorry, if you turn off the black and white, it's a little bit hard to see it. Right, but if you turn that on, now you could see it. And if you still can't see it with that way, you could basically mess with your reds, mess with your yellows, and you could push these just a. Um, the way you would like so that you can actually get to see those transitions and if I turn on that lower um, Dodging and burning that I did as you could see it could smooth it out nicely now one other thing that you could do with uh, Check-in for to see those transitions is you could also add in like a gradient map um, so this is just basically using the um, foreground to background and all this is doing is flipping the, the lights and shadows. So what you see in the dark here is the lighter area of the image and what you see in the lighted area up here is the darkest area of, it, of the image. So it basically it just flips it around. Um, and that also helps you to see if I turn off the, the dodging and burning, as you can see here, you can see that you can see these areas where it's um, not even. So. Now you could use your dodging and burning to help even out those layers. So those are two two ways you could check um, to help you with your dodging and burning. This is just a little bit more dodging and burning that I did, and this one here is more of the deep uh, dodging and burning or global dodging and burning. Okay. Now this one here is just the lips. I just added a little bit of color to her lips, and that's that's about it. Um, the next thing here is the eyes. So if I zoom in here on her eyes, um, I don't do much with um, my subject's eyes. Like, you know, I would have gone in there and get rid of that red vein and stuff like that. I don't do much of those, much of that. But what I do try to do is draw attention to their eyes. 
Um, so one of the things I do is put like a little bit of eyeliner, well, Photoshop eyeliner, just to add that to her eyes, just to bring a little bit more attention. Now, if the if you have a makeup artist and the makeup artist actually already did that, well, you don't need to do it in Photoshop, but um, we didn't have any makeup artists on the shoot, so I did it. Um, and then I just sharpened her eyes a little bit. Um, so this is just sharpening on her eyes and that was that. Next thing here is the cleanup. So there was two things that I cleaned up here. One of the, one of the things is her flyaway here. So if I turned it on, so again, I rid of some of the flyaway here. Uh, the other thing that I got rid of is this little thing here. This was just a little bit distracting. So I got rid of that. So those, those were the two cleanup items that I did. Now, color grading. So color grading, this is one of my banes of my existence. Um, color grading is something I do not enjoy doing. Uh, it's, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Um, but I'll just walk you through exactly what I did here so you guys can have some context. So what I did is lift the shadows um, and drop the highlights here just to flatten out the image. So this is what this uh, curve did here. The next curve is just adding contrast back into the image. This curve is adding some uh, blues and highlights to the image, kind of giving it that cinematic feel. So if I go here and I go to the channel, uh, the blue channel, and I push the blues and, well, I push it, the blues into the shadows and I push some of the yellows into the highlights and that's all that is, okay? Then this is just desaturating the image just a little bit. I like to desaturate my image if you go into this. If I made this 100%, it's black and white. So all I did was just basically drop the percentage to 12% and it desaturates the image a little bit. So that was my first um, crack at, you know, color grading the image. And if I was happy with it, I would have stopped here, but I wasn't happy. So I was uh, said, okay, what else can I do? All I did here, let's go through this. Um, so in Photoshop here, I have a plugin and it's called Exposure uh, 6. If I go to Exposure 6, there's one specific plugin that I use consistently for most of my images. And if you go here, it's called um, Saturated Sun, Saturated Increase um, Warm. And that's pretty much what I use primarily for most of my images. This one looks horrible because it was already applied to this image. So I will quit out of this because we're not gonna apply this. The next I, thing that I did here is if I go to, um, I created a stamp visible layer. So for this one, all I did was go to filter uh, camera raw filter, which is essentially like Photoshop. I'm sorry, essentially like um, Lightroom. You have these presets here. Now, a while ago, I had purchased some presets from RGG and I never really used them because I never really found them to be um, actually useful. Uh, but in this particular case, it was pretty useful. And by the way, I'm, I, I wasn't, I'm not sponsored by RGG or anything like that. It's not sponsored by them, but I just putting it out there that one, you know, a while ago I purchased these uh, presets. Um, so I don't use them that much, but I did use them on this particular image. And in this case, I use Chrome um, Sunday. That's what I use the preset that they have here in Chrome Sunday. Um, so if I cancel out of that, that's pretty much what I use there. Then for this level, um, I added in this level and all I did on this one was again, just lift up the shadows and the highlights a little bit just to again, flatten the image. And as you can see, I made this luminosity so it doesn't impact the colors. Then on this one here, if I bring up this levels, what I did here is add contrast back into the image, right? Similar process as before, it's just a different methodology. I'm using levels instead of curves um, for this one. Then we have the selective color. The one thing I would say with selective color, you just need to play with selective color and you know go into all these different um, colors and just push the sliders until you're happy with what you see. And that's essentially what I did. I don't have any rhyme or reason or any methodology behind this stuff. I just play with it until I'm happy with what I see. Um, so the next thing I did was just add a little bit more dodging and burning to the image. And if you could look at that before, after, before, after. Um, and then finally, sharpen the image. Now I don't sharpen my image a ton, even if I scroll, uh, scroll and zoom in, right? If I go before, after, before, after, 
I doubt what you could see that I could hardly see it on my screen. Um, so yeah, I don't sharpen my image a ton, but that's what you got. So that's pretty much it. That's what I do for my images um, for the most part to color grade it. Uh, and I hope this was helpful to you guys. If it was, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. Put some comments down below. Let me know what you think. Share this video with your friends or family if you think it will be helpful to them. And guys, if you got this far in this video and you haven't subscribed to the channel, well, you're not forced to subscribe, but if you want to subscribe, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell button so you can get the notification. So I didn't get this done in 10 minutes like I like to, but I think I got it done in less than 11 minutes. Take care. Bye.